you enjoyed what you've seen thus far and would like to support my indie titles development, consider pledging to my Patreon. I'm currently developing a game called Harmon that'll have you puzzle solving with only 7 days to save all life in the universe. Any contributions would be greatly appreciated to help me continue projects like these, as well as my own indie game. A lot of people have asked me to do some sort of video to achieve the lighting similar to the League of Legends video. The actors you'll need to achieve the lighting here is an exponential height fog, a directional light, a skylight, and a post-processing volume that is ticked to be unbound. You also want to make sure you enable generate mesh distance fields in your project settings, as we'll be using distance field shadows and distance field ambient occlusion. To start off, you'll want to get an idea for the scene's lighting. It's best to look to the real world when it comes to this, as it'll give you the best initial results. For the league video, I went for a morning sunrise after a heavy rain. Also, don't be afraid to toy with the lighting settings as you go. You might run into some happy accidents. The most important thing to set for your directional light is the direction of the light itself. This will set the mood for your shots. The direction I went with for the video fits majority of the shots I went with and gave a sense of direction to which is bottom or top of the map. The other important settings are intensity, color, and volumetric scattering. These pretty much apply to all light actors, such as skylights and spotlights, so get used to fiddling with these settings. For my scene, I went with the colors red, yellow, and blue, and their complementary colors green, purple, and orange. Definitely check out color theory and complementary colors if you plan to do your own scene. To give your lighting more detail, bump up your contact shadows to 0.1. It'll give your foliage, trees, and ground extra help it needs to stand out. Light shaft occlusion is also important to create visual contrast. I suggest leaving light shaft bloom off due to a bug with the rectangular lights, causing some kind of flickering artifact. You also gain a tiny bit of performance due to light shaft blooms having a GPU cost. With the generated mesh distance fields, you'll be able to use distance field shadows. It works by using the distance fields it generates on all your static mesh to produce a more simple shadow. Their GPU cost is far less than having cascade shadows in the distance. You can also gain a little bit of extra performance by lowering the quality of the distance field shadows with console config variables. You also want to make sure your skylight is movable to enable distance field ambient occlusion. DFAO is just like another layer of detailing. It sort of works as a larger ambient occlusion than just screen space. It's also best not to worry about setting things in stone. You could always find new interesting lighting setups for future scenes or to even change the direction you originally had for your project. Never be able to just pop in some numbers and get exactly what you want. It requires a lot of adjusting and readjusting. Post-processing is extremely important, being able to quickly adjust majority of the aspects of color, lighting, contrast, and more. Each part of color grading is split into subsections, global being the entirety of the scene's color, shadows being only the darkest part of the scenes, mid-tone and highlights for additional fine-tuning. I mostly fiddle with saturation, contrast, gamma, and gain. The shadow subsection is probably the second most important one, since your complementary colors can be fine adjusted to the darker areas and the primary color being the global. You also want to mess with the other post-processing effects such as bloom, exposure, chromatic aberration, vignetting, camera grading, and more. These often give you the extra depth and realism your scene needs. These are the settings I generally go with, though it does depend from scene to scene. Color lookup tables are 256 by 16 textures that can be placed in the post-processing volumes to adjust the scene's look entirely. From there, place the original RGB table, which can be downloaded from the Unreal Doc website, and place that on top of the screenshot. Then start placing adjustment layers on top of those. Again, there is no one trick all adjustment for your scenes. You'll need to fine tune your adjustment layers as needed. Once you're finished, group everything. Then press Ctrl J to duplicate the group. And pressing Ctrl E to merge the group into a single image. Head back to your non-merged group and then press Ctrl on the old lookup table to make a selection. From there, go back to the merged layer and just press Ctrl C to copy it. Then paste it in a new 256 by 16 image and export it to Unreal. Make sure the texture settings MIP Gen is set to non-MIP maps and the texture group set to colored lookup tables. It's pretty much everything you'll need to modify to get any type of lighting for your scene. For the fantasy lighting, I looked at The Witcher 3. It has vibrant colors that aren't very realistic, but they do make the scene pop. Your average daytime scene will just have a white directional light, so I set it to a very light blue to fit the style. The fog is also set to a very light baby blue. The rest of the color came from the saturation in the post-processing, so I turned the saturation up to make it look more vibrant since the scene had duller colors. The shadow's gain was adjusted so there was less deep darks, giving it a more lighter vibe. There wasn't much need to fake a global illumination due to the white light and post-processing adjustments, but I did place some. 
I've gotten a lot of questions on where is the best place to put spotlights for your global illumination, and I'd say it's wherever the light meets the shadows, and it also has something to bounce off of, such as a rock. If there's nothing to bounce off of, don't place one, or if you do, make the intensity very low. This is how light reacts in the real world. My original lighting, I had a lot of these situations, so I did end up placing a lot of spotlights and rectangular lights. The rectangular lights were just white, and the spotlights were a brighter yellow than the directional light. This gave the feel of the light bouncing additional times. Once I got the fantasy lighting, I went on to adjusting it further with lookup tables. I played around with a grim dark look as well as recolorizing it to purple and orange. This is where you'll discover more interesting lighting scenarios that you'd previously planned. Don't be afraid of change. For the night version, I played a lot with additional lighting. I placed brighter lights around the fire and increased their volumetric scattering to give them a warmer glow. Each fire has two lights, one smaller one with a higher volumetric scattering and another larger radius lighting with a lesser volumetric scattering value. I gave the center of the fire more intensity and the outer fire a more softer glow. I also made sure to turn off cast shadows on all of the lights so it doesn't tank the performance. For the post-processing volume, I adjusted the shadow color to be a bit more vibrant and bumped the gain up so the darker areas were more brighter. And that's lighting for the League of Legends video, as well as the new lighting scenarios I did. I hope you enjoy the video. I do plan on making an ARAM, and I'm also working with a team on a game called A Thorough Clash of Souls, so it's been a bit busy. You can check out my Twitter and Discord for more. Thanks again for watching. Later.